Hello and welcome everybody. Welcome to Star Energy with Sylvia Hart. I'm Sylvia Hart. Hi. Hi. And that's not enough. My name is Sylvia and I'm an energy. Okay, so we have these lovely conferences where we get together and share some time and say hello and have a hug, which is nice. In the real world. And here we have various workshops where people are telling you about things that they're excited about, that they feel inspired about. That's what I like to encourage. And for future generations, you know, we want speakers to really love what they're talking about, right? Nothing boring. We want exciting things, even if they're quite weird and abstract. In fact, the more abstract and weird and the more exciting, the better. So today, I'm going to take us all on a bit of a journey around about star energy in its widest metaphorical sense. And that's a pretty wide metaphorical sense, if you think about it. I'd like to kick us off. Who knows this song? Could you stand up, please? <laughs> turnips are doing and how much money you're going to get for your turnips when you take them to market. But then there's the other people, you know, stargazers you might call them, or people who like to be fascinated by the truth of the world as we perceive it through our new world. And so it came to pass that the ancient civilization said that the gods lived in the skies. And now when you die, <coughs> And you've done things right, what with the funeral and with the living before that. You get to join them in the stars. And that was kind of funky. And people liked that a lot. And then along came science. You fools. Stars are only big balls of gas that burn. <laughs> nah, nothing missing. <laughs> Stupid religions, stupid stuff. <laughs> Just big burning balls of gas. They were probably all French. <laughs> but then along came Hubble and brought us some pictures. And we looked at those pictures and said, wow, those are all stars. But what? Those are not stars. Those are galaxies. Those are galaxies. Every single little spot of light you are seeing are galaxies containing millions, billions, trillions of stars. So they got a little bit more quiet after that. 
a little bit less fit. They're still burning bowls of white or spiral in a big black hole in the head. Mm -hmm. Ha! <coughs> but then came the dark matter. Apparently, what we can see with the galaxies, and there's a lot of them, accounts for 4% of the matter in the universe. The other 96% are dun, 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 <laughs> dark matter. What is dark matter? We don't know. But it has to be there or else nothing would make any sense at all. Dark matter. Yes, we also call it dark energy. Okay, and that means, well, we don't know what it means. We don't know what it is. We have no idea, actually. It's kind of shocking and freaky. And we're all pretty freaked out by it, except for some of this. And we're back where? The mystery of the stars. We're right back where we started. We're looking at a starry sky and we're like, oh my God, that's amazing. And I have no idea what's going on here. But what I can say, it's beautiful. And that's kind of nice, isn't it? <coughs> now I have a teacher who told me that we have as many, star many neurons in our brains than there are stars in the visible sky. And that the connections between them are to all intents and purposes infinite. Which is cool, isn't it? I am a huge believer in human intelligence. I think our hardware is off this world. It's the software that sucks. <laughs> and I see myself a bit as a software engineer for you know, to activate human intelligence, which is kind of nice. And while we're here, let's just do this little exercise from infinite creativity. Make an internal representation of infinity, please. And now that you have that, make it bigger. Make it a whole lot bigger. And make it even bigger than that. And tomorrow, do it again. And then every day, for the rest of your life, and know that you're never even going to get close to how big infinity actually really is. So, we have pretty good brains, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> now, our neurology is designed to respond to sparkly stars. Now, the Suggestion has been put forward that this is because we were wandering about in the African plains and seeing the sparkle of water was life saving. And so our neurology developed to find stars particularly attractive and sparkling things particularly attractive. And so we got the little sparkles all the way up to the big thing in the sky that without which we'd all die, just like that. So between the tiny little sparklies in your hand from a little bit of water in the sunshine, all the way to the great big sun, we have one hell of a metaphor on our hands, don't we? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Here we have also a love progression, where you know we have the symbol of the red physical heart for love. But when you expand that, it becomes more and more light filled, and eventually it becomes a flaring star. The heart center becomes a flaring star. And there's our metaphor for the star once more, which I kind of like. So I would like us all to consider that for a moment. And if you'd like to assume the heart position for a moment. <laughs> Take a deep breath in and out. And say together with me now, at the moment of my conception, a star was born. How does that feel? Does that feel as though 
Is this true? Yes. That, that there is a part of you that knew this all along. See, I keep being told that people like myself tell people what they want to hear and in their stupidity they buy into what that person is saying. The cult that they're saying. You know? In their stupidity. I say that the reason that people respond to this stuff is because it's true. Because they can feel it in their own bodies that they are were born to be more than what we've managed to manifest so far. That there is this starry spark inside people that makes them truly different from everything else that's out there. You know, as much as we love our pet, the pet dogs and all the rest of it and our cats, that there is something special about us. And that I absolutely believe that metaphor is spot on at the moment of my conception a star was born. That doesn't mean a Hollywood star. <laughs> you know, that doesn't mean an X-Factor star. But something, something sparked into existence that wasn't there before. Think about it. That was never there before. Doesn't matter how many people you have in your ancestral line. At the moment of your conception, something sparked into physical reality, into the universe that was not there before. And that something is at the core and the heart of you. And I believe that to be true. Absolutely true. And I also believe that this is a real energy system. That this isn't a metaphor or an idea or a craziness, but that there really is something inside of our energy system that is absolutely extraordinary, galactic, and universal in nature. So that is then the visualization of that system, that spark, as it grows. And I do see it like that, like a galaxy. It's a natural <coughs> system, why shouldn't it be? in that natural spiral that we find everywhere else. Why shouldn't it underlie the laws of nature? Why shouldn't it? So this spark, what kind of word could we use for it? Any ideas? What could that be, this energy system I'm talking about? Does that somehow remind you of heard of something called the immortal soul? Now, I have satisfied myself in my own personal research that without that system, the human energy system doesn't make any sense at all, doesn't work, structure. The calculations I've made to get there, I can't put on your board, so I can't prove this with the mathematics we have at the moment. But I absolutely believe that at the moment of your conception, a star was born, and that this star is a soul seed. Not a finished soul. A soul seed that needs to grow into that kind of thing. I call the soul in German das Zauberherz, the heart of magic, that which creates magic, miracles. It's not the heart that does that, the heart does normal things. It loves, it heals, it powers. But you, if you want miracles and magic, that's not heart matter, that's a soul matter. A star matter, if you will. So I've been fascinated by this for a long, long time. And earlier this year, I started painting the universal processions, and I did a lot of them. And obviously, as I do this, I meditate upon, if you will, the soul's journey and the events and how it all works and, you know, <laughs> And it's, it's a wonderful way of doing that. And there came the question to me, which was quite important, I thought, where do the stars go? Right. Now, leaving the stars as souls for a moment, we have a number of different energy experiences in the energy body with energy events. This one here is a proper star event. So we have a person who's walking around happily in their lives with their little energy system. Then something happens. 
ta-da, they fall in love, or something explodes in their, you know, they have an enlightenment experience, and this is a proper star event, so it doesn't get stuck. It actually goes all the way in through and out, you have the whole whoosh experience. And so now, where do those stars go? Where do these events go? Where are they stored? Because when you have sort of stuck events, like say for example, somebody has a love event with somebody and it's a guiding star, an obsession, and it gets stuck here in the heart. So the energy rises up, it tries to go all the way and throw it down, but it doesn't, it explodes here and gets stuck here. So that's the people who stalk and, you know, have, can't get rid, have an obsession with this person. Endless love pain, thousands of years of agony. And when an Emo Trans practitioner comes along, they just say, okay, soften and flow, whoosh out, and oh my God, I feel so much better. Yay. You know, but likewise, if people have these stuck in their genital region and they have a sexual fetish, if it's stuck in the stomach region and they have some sort of eating disorder. You know, you know the basic events, event stuff. But when it actually goes all the way in through and out, where do the stars go? Literally, physically, I mean this physically. Where do they go? Because the person remembers really clearly. They have access to the information in that. It's no longer stuck anywhere in the physical body. It's not hovering above your head. Where is that? Where's that gone? Where are those events gone that people remember as the airplane goes down and they think they're going to die? Where do the stars go? They're certainly not st stuck in the meridian system, in the energy body. They're not stuck in the subtle energy body either. They're on a completely different level, which I find really, really interesting. <coughs> yeah, so that's quite intriguing, isn't it? What's going on there then, we wonder? <laughs> I guess so. Well, I've got to that. We find out, we. So where do the stars go? What if they are building a astral body, a star man? We could call them because they're made up of all these experiences that have gone in through and up and up. Isn't that an interesting idea? Yes. So what I find quite <laughs> okay. So what I find quite interesting about this whole thing is that this is clearly a level of energy that we don't normally have conscious access to, right? <clears throat> this is even above sanctuary. This is in a place that the conscious mind can no longer conceptualize. But that would be an interesting thing that the stars that we make are being carried up to that and are building the star map. Mm. And so here we have a really nice kind of an idea for if you want to do some personal development or if you want to do play, play with this sort of thing with your friends, is make friends with your star map. Invite him into sanctuary. No, have a, have a chat, you know. Don't leave him waiting in the sky any longer. He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'll blow our minds. <laughs> well, come on down, come on down. You're not going to blow my mind anymore. I can tap on it. <laughs> Ooh, even though my head's exploding. I can keep it down. <laughs> but yeah, to make friends with the star man in a happy way. You look, I've, I've got these, these happy people here, these happy. They're not scary, they're not spooky, they're not anything. They're just sort of, that's a person. And that's their star man. And wouldn't it be nice if they became friends or even lovers or even better still, wouldn't it be nice if they sort of gotten on the same page? Wouldn't it make sense that that's how it was always supposed to be? Yeah? That there shouldn't be this, 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 this cut-off between us in our physical bodies here being all alone and away apart from everybody and I'm not connected to him, I'm not because I'm far away, you know, we're not touching each other. And likewise, I'm not connected to my star man, 
I'm not touching him, he's nowhere here, I'm all by myself, meh, meh, meh. And this is so wrong to think that way. So I, I would propose, and that's just a theory at this point, is that we should be one and the same with our star map. So something that you might consider doing is to have a little dance in sanctuary with your star map or in a nice starry space. And perhaps as you're dancing, you can become one and the same. Or just make, just make friends with them. That might be nice, mightn't it? Because I think that if you make friends with your star map, something quite remarkable happens is that you become a star. This is our happy energy man. And see, he's not just happy, he's also spreading stars, isn't he? What might they be? Who knows? Who knows what gifts the star man has for us? Yes, so, so what is our job in this lifetime? To create fodder for the soul people more positive experiences that we don't cling on to and hold like, oh, I love my husband so much and he's dead now and I'm clinging on to it and I'm holding it in my heart because if I didn't, there'd be a great big hole in my heart. It's energy, it needs to go in, through and out. And when that's gone all the way through and your heart is healing, you can then have that eternal love and that eternal strength from that. And so you don't have to be afraid of loving and losing, and loving, and losing, and loving, and losing, because every time you do that, you have more and more stars, and more and more friends in high places, who are loving you, and supporting you on your path. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Does that make It's kind of cool. I'm really trying to encourage people to have more positive experiences in their life. More high level experiences in their life. Big fan of that. So for some obscure reason we are missing a hell of a lot of these slides, which is fine. We're going to leave that there for a moment. And what we'll do instead is we're going to do some starry exercises. How about that? Would you like that? Yes. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. Okay, put your stuff down. Take your clothes off. <laughs> I always want to say that after that. <laughs> somewhere. 
where all these star men and star women and star creatures are standing in some kind of resonant communication with each other. Could that be possible? Could there be life after death? Not life as we know it, but something else. Is there a possibility even of this? Would you like something like that to be possible? Yes. Is it possible that we can actually create such a thing even if it never existed before? Yeah. That's another question, isn't it? You know, everybody's saying, oh, like, there's these gods and they're flying about in the sky. And, and I'm so suspicious that people created them all. And if we have that wondrous power, why not create something as marvelous as a star man who's wanting to dance with us? and who's giving us star power and sparkles, our incarnation, in a whole new way. Wouldn't that be a nice thing? Well, let's go back in. Back to that. Building our energy systems. Building our star man with our experiences. Do you think that would be awesome? Does that not inspire you to go out and, I don't know, Jump on somebody and profit. <laughs> <laughs> so it always cheers me up. Always. Always. I never, never makes me not smile. Okay, so what I would like to do is um, I'd like to conclude this, if I may. And perhaps we can do a little bit of email together, a little bit of star, you know, star power. Yes? yes? Shall we? Yes. yes. Cool, let's do that. Again, get undressed as you know. <laughs> and rise, Julian, and shine and sparkle. Oh. Wake up the energy systems. Yep, shimmy and shake. And pay attention to your sixth sense where any parts of you are a little bit sort of well, tired or low of energy or in sitting too low talking too much or the necks are a bit like excellent right start with the heart star why don't we <coughs> just take a deep breath in and out and conceive your heart like a flaring star did any heart shaped hearts melt away and really get a sense of the expansion of your own heart bit. <coughs> Freed from all restrictions of what we think that could be. Really let it expand. Deep breath. <coughs> I'd like you to think to yourself, I'm a star. I like that. I just want to say again, I'm a star. I'm a star. And I don't care if anybody can see me or, you know, or knows this or if they're living under a rain cloud or a rock. You know, I am a star. I'm a star. Oh, I like this. Good idea. Thank you, Energy Mind. Love my Energy Mind. My hands are the hands of a star. Yeah, they are. Well, that's cool, isn't it? The hands of a star. Touch yourself with the hands of a star. Within reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite interesting, isn't it? Just uh, turn around and touch somebody else with the hands of a star. <laughs>
like a star. And breathing like a star. And expandedly thinking like a star. Shining like a star. Very nice. I can really <coughs> feel energy coming up. Can you feel that? <laughs> Isn't that cool? Beautiful as a star. Always. We are the stars. We are. Every one of us. And all the people out there, even if they don't know this, at the moment of our conception, the star was born. It's well worth remembering that when we get depressed and distressed about humanity and its problems. But I think star energy is a wonderful thing. It enlightens, it brings hope in a dark night, it's a beautiful thing, it's a beautiful metaphor. And if you're ever getting depressed or down in the dumps or feeling old or whatever, just think to yourself, I am a star. I'm absolutely a star. It's wonderful, vibrant, uplifting energy. And I do like that exercise. I'm a star and I will now shake the hands of my great friends. <laughs> and everybody can do that. And nobody is going to be down out of by it. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. All right. So, who are the stars? We are, we are the stars. Who are the stars? <laughs> and with that wonderful thought in mind, we are going to take the conference photograph. And I want you all to be the absolute stars and bring that energy. And literally, yeah, star energy. And that will be absolutely wonderful. So thank you very much for listening to me. I hope you're going to make friends with your soul and your stars. And I'll see you soon. Thank you.